adapter and I'm going to bind that network adapter to one of my networks that's already configured. The important thing with networking here is that both nodes in the cluster use the same names to refer to the same networks. So you saw I used a network called Wired Virtual Network. That name also exists on the other cluster node and it connects to the same place. Now obviously if you don't have the same names or they connect to different places when the virtual machine fails over it won't be able to reconnect to the network. So now I have my virtual machine but it's not yet highly available and I've got two ways to make it highly available I can do this from the command line and you can see here there's a failover cluster PowerShell management tool and there's a command to add a highly available virtual machine but to make it a bit easier to see what I'm doing I'm going to do this through the graphical interface so I go to services and applications and I say I want to configure a new service or application I select the one that I want which is a new virtual machine and what the wizard will do is it will go and look at the cluster nodes and find any candidates to make highly available so it's found the one I just configured and now it will just step through the process of making that a highly available virtual machine it offers me a report at the end and there we can see it so now my virtual machines configured I can start it uh, I'm going to be lazy here and just select start all virtual machines but I can uh, start virtual machines individually and you'll notice here that uh, if you were familiar with the setup on server 2008 before R2 uh, one of the things that we've gained is out of the box uh, the failover cluster manager understands the vocabulary of dealing with a virtual machine so now what I'm going to do is something I wouldn't recommend that you do in a real-world environment and that's to connect using the VM connect utility inside this remote desktop session I've got going to Wallace R2 uh, if you do that it's kind of remote desktop inside remote desktop and we get issues with things like mouse connectivity but that's going to be fine for me so uh, I'm going to be able to connect to that virtual machine I just won't be able to use the mouse and as you can see I'm doing something else unusual and that is I'm running Hyper-V server inside a VM you can't start any VMs inside a VM but that's fine for me because I just want to see how the tools working and in particular I'm going to use this little part of the configuration utility to check on my network settings and just confirm that the IP address I'd assigned to this VM in advance is still available and it is so I'm going to use that pre-configured IP address to connect using a uh, normal remote desktop session into the operating system inside the VM rather than connecting to the kind of virtual KVM switch on the back of that uh, virtual machine and this is the recommended way of connecting and you'll see here I get my session and the other thing that you'll see is the VM connect session is now sent back to the logon screen because we can't have two people connected to the same session now what I need to do is to give my uh, virtual machine some work to do so that we can see the works not interrupted during the process of a live migration so this command just sets up a large file copy that copies files to nowhere and you'll see the files going through and we'll be able to see that the uh, virtual machines going through uninterrupted now if I come round to failover cluster manager I can go to my virtual machine and I can relocate it to another node you can see here we've got the old style quick migration which puts the virtual machine into a saved state moves it and brings it out of the saved state on the other node and we've got the new live migration so I've got one node I can migrate to I'm going to select that node and having started the migration if I go and look at the virtual machine you can see here that the migrations begun to occur now I want to be able to compare and contrast the VM connect session and what happens to that against what happens to a session that's gone direct into the operating system that's being virtualized 
So I'm just going to move my windows around a bit here so you can see what's happening and although the uh, migration's already occurring you can see that we're not going into a safe state here that copy process is continuing to run. Now watch the current owner of the VM and you just saw it switch to Gromit. So the live migration is complete and if you were watching the remote desktop session you might have seen things slowed down a bit as we did the cut over but the remote desktop session was unaffected. We didn't uh, have to re-establish the connection. Now compare that with what happened to the virtual machine connect session this was connecting to the VM on a specific host and obviously it's not on that host anymore so we have to end the connection and connect to the virtual machine on its new home but that's not how users are going to connect they're going to connect to the virtual machine over the network for example uh, using uh, the remote desktop session and that was uninterrupted so there you have it live migration from beginning to end